Good day, hope you're doing well. Um, for me, one of the joys of photography is to try different lenses on different cameras. And some of these combinations I find work very well. Others are not so good. And some are even actually quite bad. For instance, I've always struggled to get sharp images with my Nikon 50mm f1.4 G lens on my Nikon D800E camera. And actually, in my experience, the 50mm f1.8 G lens works better on my Nikon D800E. Now, I recently bought a mirrorless camera from Nikon, the little Z30. And on this camera, it's actually the, the other way around. Uh, so for some strange reason, the 1.4G is actually doing very well, better than on the D800E. And uh, the 1.8G on the Z30 is actually not doing very well. It is, in terms of autofocus, it's all over the place. Sometimes I get very sharp images, sometimes I get very soft images. So I decided to do a, a little bit of lens testing. And the results of these tests agree so well with my experience with these lenses and cameras that I thought it would be nice to not only share the results of these experiments or these tests, um, but also the test procedure itself. So the idea of the test is actually quite simple. Um, I'm going to take a good amount of shots of a test target with each camera lens combination of interest. So in this case, two cameras and two lenses and objectively measure the level of sharpness. Then I'm going to review the data and see if I can identify any better or worse combinations. Um, I'll explain the test setup and the measurement of the lens sharpness a little bit later in the video. All right, so let's now take a look at the results from these tests. Remember, I have two cameras and two lenses, so I had to test four combinations. Um, for every combination, I shot 20 photos, so in total I have 80 photos. I shot every shot for every photo at f5.6, and I turned the lens to infinity before every shot, so that the autofocus really had to bring the lens into focus for every individual photograph. And then for every photo, I've determined the MTF50 measurement in line pairs per millimeter using the free software called MTF Mapper. More on that later in the video. So when I plot the data grouped by camera lens combination, here is the results. So on the vertical axis, I've got the MTF50 number in line pairs per millimeter, and this is ranging from 30 to 80. And of course, higher numbers signify a greater level of sharpness. And then on the horizontal axis, I've got four groups of data points. And these, of course, correspond to the four camera lens combinations. So from left to right, all the way to the left, I've got 20 dots, a group of 20 dots for the D800E with a 1.4G lens. Then I have a group of 20 dots for the D800E with a 1.8 lens. Then I have 20 dots, cyan dots, uh, for the Z30 with the 1.4 lens. And finally, a group of 20 purple dots for the Z30 with the 1.8 lens. The results are actually completely in line with my personal experience. So first off, the D800E with the 1.4 lens gives me the lowest sharpness levels. You can see on the plot that this is actually the, the worst of the bunch. I'm getting readings between 30 line pairs per millimeter and 40, a little bit over 40 line pairs per millimeter. There is one shot that reaches almost 50 line pairs per millimeter, but you can really see by comparing it against the other results that these are actually the, the worst uh, of the bunch. The 1.8G lens on the D800E, which is this group of dots, is doing a lot better. And most of my readings are between 60 and 75 uh, line pairs per millimeter. So that's almost double what I got from the 1.4G lens. And remember, all these shots were taken at f5.6, which is an aperture at which the lens should be performing almost at its peak or at its peak. Next up is the Z30 with the 1.4 lens. So that's this bunch of uh, dots. This is actually a very good combination. And even though we shouldn't compare uh, MTF values directly between cameras, 
it is clear to me that the 1.4 lens on the Z30 is doing much better than on the D800E. I'm getting values between 70 and 80 line pairs per millimeter with a single less well-focused shot uh, with an MTF value of about 50 line pairs per millimeter. And then finally, the confirmation of my experience with the 1.8 lens on the Z30, which is this. It's actually not really a group of dots anymore. It's completely stretched out over the entire range from a very low value of less than 30 line pairs per millimeter to a very high value of over 80 line pairs per millimeter. It's clear that this camera lens combination is very unpredictable in terms of getting images in focus. Now, based on these results, I'm happy that I never sold the 1.4G lens. While for me it disappoints on the D800E, it's a really nice lens on the Z30. And I actually did a portrait shoot about two weeks ago with this combination alongside the D800E with an 85mm lens and the best photos of the session actually came from the Z30 with a 50mm f1.4 lens. Let's take a look at the actual test setup and procedure. You will need a camera on a tripod, a white background lit by an LED light or a speed light, and a razor blade held in place by, for instance, an A-clamp. The idea is to backlight the knife or razor blade so that you get a high contrast, very straight edge, which you can then measure the sharpness of in software. Instead of a razor blade or a hobby knife, you could also print and use a test chart. If you go this route, make sure you print on thick paper and try to get the best possible print quality. MTF Mapper includes some test charts that you can print. I've tried this as well, but on my inkjet printer, the edges are all but sharp and crisp. This, of course, makes it difficult for the program to calculate a good MTF 50 value, so I ended up using the backlit razor blade method, which is far easier and gives more consistent results. In terms of the procedure, make sure the blade is in the center of the frame and that your AF point covers it, so that your AF will focus on the blade. If you want to test AF performance, you should move the lens out of focus before every shot so that the camera has to acquire focus each time. Here's an example shot of the scene. The background is white, but it's not overexposed, and the blade is in silhouette, so it appears as black. Note that the edge that I'm going to measure is at an angle. In this shot, the edge is at about an 8 degree angle, which you can measure in Photoshop by dragging your ruler and then reading it off here. So this is negative 8.1 degrees. So this edge is at about an 8 degree angle with respect to the horizontal direction. And according to the user manual of F MTF Mapper, the edges should be between 2 degrees and 44 degrees. So you do have some leeway and you don't have to be super precise. So now I'll show you how you can read in the photos and take the measurements. So we'll go to MTF Mapper, which is actually open right now. And before we do anything, we'll go to Settings, Preferences. And then there is a section called input flags and if you if you want to see the results in line pairs per millimeter units then you have to type in the pixel size in micrometers uh, if you're okay with um, seeing the results in cycles per pixel then you don't have to worry about this and you can just uncheck this box but if you like to see line pairs per millimeter as as the units you have to provide the software with the, with this number if you don't know the number, you can look it up online, for instance, on digicamdb.com. You can find your camera and then you can uh, look um, here, pixel pitch, 4.87 micrometers. And that's the number that you can type in here. And then you just click accept. All right, so let's go back to MTF Mapper. And you want to click on file and then open with manual edge selection. And then you have the possibility of reading in one or several files. Uh, by the way, do not use JPEGs because JPEGs will be sharpened either by the camera or by some software. You don't want that. You want the unsharpened, you know, the, the simple raw files. So these are all raw files and I'm going to select the first 20 files, which are the 20 shots that I took with the 1.8 lens. One thing to make sure is that you have this box ticked, which says annotated image, because the annotated image is actually the image with the annotation, and the annotation is actually the MTF50 value, which is the result that you want to see. All right, so let's click open. And if your camera hasn't moved at all between the shots, you can identify 
the edge of interest only once and the software can use this so-called region of interest which is abbreviated as ROI for all the subsequent shots in the queue. So I haven't even physically touched my camera to take the shots because I shoot tethered. So for me, this is a real time saver. So I'm going to select the edge and you can do that by holding down the control key and then rotating the, the middle mouse wheel. And then you just click once and then you drag the mouse without holding the mouse button down and then you click one more time and this is then my edge of interest or my region of interest. I'm going to select reuse regions of interest so that for all these 20 shots he will just use the same region of interest because this blade will appear in the same place in each of those photos and I'm going to say accept queued and then it will go through all these photos. So I'm going to leave it to all the computations. You can see that the results are coming in and then we'll take a look at the results. Okay, so let's take a look at the results. So the first image, so the result is always your image and then the annotated result, the annotated image, meaning the result is annotated to the photo. So if you zoom in, you will see that the number is printed here on this edge and this is 75 line pairs per millimeter. So that's the number for the first image. We can look at the second image, 63.2, 69.1, etc. So every image will give you a different result, which is fine. It's because the autofocus system isn't perfect. And so each shot is ever so slightly better or worse in focus. And now all you have to do is transfer these numbers to a software such as Excel and plot the data. Now I didn't use Excel, I used R, which can do very advanced statistical analysis, but it can also be used to create some simple plots and that's what we needed today. All right, so to wrap up, let me say that doing this test doesn't have to take a lot of your time. It took me about one hour to test the four camera lens combinations, admittedly only at a single aperture, but still even such a limited data set can be informative. Uh, it can save you from wasting your time with a clearly inferior lens camera combination. Of course, I know in practical photography there are other considerations than lens sharpness alone and each photographer attaches more or less importance to sharpness. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like or even subscribe. If you'd like to leave a comment or question, feel free to do so. Thank you very much for watching and see you the next time. Bye-bye.